Cryem is, is a very good microscopy method to actually observe molecules and from that information you can reconstruct at very high level of detail how that molecule looks like. Joachim Frank was a pioneer in the applications of cryem. He developed the very basic methods of observing individual molecules in very many random orientations and, and, and do 3D reconstructions based on that. And he applied it to a very important question in molecular cell biology, uh, namely the study of ribosomes, which are, you could say, the big particles in the cells that translate genetic information into proteins. We were the first to get one of these machines in Denmark. Only Sweden and Denmark in the Scandinavian countries actually have these titan cryos machines that are the high end or the top uh, level uh, electron microscope. So it's quite rare. So the reason why it's called a cryo uh, electron microscope is because we work at cryogenic temperatures. So we need to cool the sample down to a liquid nitrogen temperature around minus 196 degrees Celsius. And then we transfer the sample into the uh, cryo electron microscope and we put an electron beam on it and we can then image it with the electron beam uh, and uh, at high resolution. To produce a sample for the cryogenic electron microscope, we need to have a very pure protein sample. This pure protein sample has to be cooled down to cryogenic temperatures and we have specialized uh, machines for this called plunge freezers um, where you put the protein sample into these plunge freezers and then the protein sample is plunged into liquid ethane and cooled down very rapidly, uh, 200 degrees from uh, 4 degrees Celsius to minus 196 degrees Celsius in milliseconds. This is very important because we need to produce a solvent that is glass-like so we can see the molecules when we put the electrons on the sample and image it. During my PhD I've been working with a membrane protein. It's embedded in the membrane and is responsible for transporting calcium across the membrane out of the cell. I was looking for an intermediate conformation of the protein. So you have two well-known conformations, but then I was looking for something in between. With cryoEM, you can apply an active sample and then freeze it. And this was not possible to obtain this information by other methods. When I then started to use cryoEM, we had this breakthrough and I could finally answer the main name of, of my PhD thesis. Cryo-EM for me is really a creative process. It's a, almost like a playground where you can try lots of different things and this is exactly how you get to know your data because each data set is unique. There's not a straight way from A to B here. You need to find your own way. Now we accelerate uh, our understanding of the very complex networks and feedback mechanisms in, in cell biology. And what are the basic mechanisms? What are the, the coupling between genetic information of players that are important, for example, for developing disease or advanced function like brain function and so forth? And with cryium, you can study these things actually uh, physically. What is it actually that they do with each other, all these players? Um, so you get a complete visualization of how life works. I, I think a very good example to compare it to is, is, is astronomy, where you have had huge revolutions with, for example, the Hubble telescope and now the James Webb uh, telescopes. That suddenly, and, and, and these kind of revolutions mean also here for astronomy, two things. I mean, both you can study things that you couldn't study before, that you always wanted to know, so at, at finer detail and so forth. Plus, suddenly you start observing things you hadn't ever known of before.